What's up guys, Rick here with your preview for this week's Travelers Championship. We had an unbelievable instant classic last week, but there is no rest for the weary because we are going straight to another signature event. We're going to break it down with data, with information, with numbers, maybe a little bit of trend action. We're going to run some models and we're going to see what happens. So let's just jump right on into this. This is uh, my website, rickrungood.com. Everything you see will be from uh, my website. I think it's great. And I think that you will too. TPC River Highlands. So we are headed to Cromwell, Connecticut, and this is a golf course that's fairly unique on the PGA tour, right? It's a, it's a peat die course. So you know that there is going to be visual attacks as well as physical attacks on you. And there's going to be a little bit of mental warfare along the way, but by all accounts, this is one of the shorter golf courses on the PGA tour schedule playing to about 6,800 yards as a par 70. And if you look at the regression model over the course of the past uh, 12 years or so, which is where I run this data from, it does reward precision uh, more than it rewards power or distance. And obviously because the short yardage does not box anybody out of this golf tournament. So what you'll see here is that driving accuracy is ranked 12th. That means there are only 11 other courses in which driving accuracy is more important. Not only that, but look at some of the um, highest correlated secondary stats, distance from edge of fairway, right rough tendency. That is golfers who are not only playing out of the short grass, but when they're missing, they are missing in a small way. Driving distance is ranked 41st. 41st, that's not very highly correlated at all. In fact, it's really not. And then you look at the rest of the stats here, and most of them are middle of the road, anywhere between 21st and 23rd, which I also think passes the sniff test because this golf course opens up a wide range of outcomes. Basically, every golfer, one through, in this case, 70, um, is is capable of winning. And and this was kind of, this was a lot different when this was a full field event, right? Because you would see some of the shorter guys, maybe there were longer shots, um, shorter like distance-wise, not odds-wise. And then longer uh, odds guys uh, popping up, winning, uh, playing well, and, and it created a situation where maybe 150 guys were live. Now, there's not even close to that number of players in the field this week, and it is a no-cut event, so they are guaranteed to play those four rounds. But when you look at it, uh, I think start with precision and, and go from there. Now, if you take that model... Uh, and look at every golfer in this field over the last 36 rounds. Scotty Scheffler still gets the best adjusted fit. I know that the um, the U.S. Open was was not great for him. We will talk about Scotty here in sec in just a second. But the top five in terms of best adjusted fit are Scotty Scheffler, Xander Shoffley, Rory McIlroy, Hideki, Ludwig Oberg, and then you get to the guys that. Um, are maybe you know just non studs, right? So you get Christian Bezadenhout, uh, Denny McCarthy. Colin Morikawa is certainly a stud. Siwoo Kim, Russell Henley, Mackenzie Hughes, right? Those types of golfers where their skill set is more rewarded at a golf course like this. And you'll see it. Um, you know, in the numbers here, I have missed fairway penalties. I've got long drive rewards, how often players are hitting fair. And basically, I mean, you hit a lot of fairways around here because most guys are clubbing down. You're not having to hit driver and the reward, the statistical reward for hitting a long drive. It's not, it's not huge long drive for me. I define that as a drive that was longer than the average on that hole that day, right? So if the average was 270, how much did you get, uh, in terms of a scoring, uh, average boost or or were you able to beat the field average if you hit one 300 yards on that hole or 290 or something like that. And there is just not a huge reward for having a long drive uh, compared to other golf courses. The exception there is is number 13. That's a par five. If that's your, you know, one of your really big opportunities to to make an eagle um, to short par five, guys are going to be able to, to take advantage of that. And then of course, that leads to you know a lot of shots coming from 150 yards and in, uh, especially relative to to tour average. I would also throw in 150 to 175 in there. You're just hitting a bunch of different uh, buckets coming in here. I think that's mostly it on TPC River Highlands. It's a fun little course. Um, 
enjoy it quite a bit. You should be able to see really good scoring. And then also um, relative to the field, there should be a pretty big uh, wide gap of guys that have a, have the ability to win. So here's the cheat sheet on rickrungood.com. And there are four golfers over $10,000. Before we even get to that, TPC River Highland is a, is a pretty sticky course history course, right? The guys that play well here tend to play well year over year. The guys that don't play well here tend to struggle year over year. I will say that that is slightly different, um, maybe more than slightly different, with this being a signature event. This used to be an event that would get okay to good fields because it's an incredibly well-run golf tournament. It usually, it, it often wins awards, literally wins awards for like the best run tournament of the year, all that stuff. So it would get an okay to good field, but with the signature status, you're, you're definitely getting a, a, a crazy good field. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to take you to the Holy Grail and I'm going to take you to the course horses tab. Now this lets you look at, um, any player for any golf course, set the minimum number of rounds and see how well they've played there. And if you want to filter out years and, and such, you can. So let's just pump in TPC River Highlands here and just get a baseline for the types of golfers who have had success. We're going to lower our minimum rounds down to 12. If you think eight is better, you could go to eight. That would really just bump in uh, Corey Connors and Austin Eckroat. So we'll, we'll, we'll go with that here and we'll sort this by salary just so that we can kind of get a feel for, cause that's the way we're going to go through the fantasy. That's the way that we're going to go through this real quick. Um, so the big three at the top, Scotty Scheffler, Rory McIlroy, Xander Shoffley have all played at least 14 rounds. They've all gained at least 1.5 strokes per round. Very good there. Colin Morikawa, which is surprising has not played well here. Eight rounds. He is losing strokes to the field. That is two missed cuts, one in 2020, one in 2023. That is interesting. We'll talk more about him in just a second. Um, Cantlay has been great. And now I'm just looking for big numbers here. Brian Harmon at 8,300 has been great. Uh, Shane Lowry, or excuse me, Adam Scott. I was looking at the wrong row. Um, I'm pointing out guys that have gained at least a stroke per round. Jason Day, Justin Rose, and finally, Webb Simpson at the bottom. I believe I hit all of them there um, once we got down into that 8K range. Okay, so let's go back to the cheat sheet here. Scotty Scheffler is $12,500. Um, he is, uh, whatever whatever you want to say about Scotty, the performance last week was, was not great. Um, he finished T40-41. That's, that's not good. It's not good enough for him, especially after the run that he's been on. I'm still quite pleased with how he did this, right? He gained nine strokes from tee to green and he was fairly miserable off the tee, okay? I mean, he was hitting so many shots, especially on Thursday and Friday, where he set up for that beautiful little cut and the ball never cut. I mean, he just was in the left garbage constantly and still found a way whoops, to gain a stroke to the field. And you can see he actually got better after Thursday, um, gained strokes off the tee in each of the final three rounds. The big issue is the putter. He lost every single day. He lost six strokes putting. That's the first time he's lost putting since Riviera. I'm quickly forgiving this, right? This is uh, going to be a much better golf course for him. There's going to be a lot less I shouldn't say better. There's going to be less luck involved. He's going to be guaranteed four rounds. It is going to be a smaller field. And he said something about, you know, the, um, he had really struggled reading those greens last week. If you look at what he has done at the travelers in the past, he's played here four times. He has gained 2.6 minus 0.2. He lost, he, he lost one stroke and he gained a half a stroke in his four trips. And he is, he has been on a much better putting stretch recently than prior to any of those tournaments. So very good time to just quickly forgive and forget here. Rory McIlroy. Oh boy. Oh boy. If I feel gutted, imagine how he feels. Um, again, good enough to win a major. And the only way to chalk that up is a, is a choke. That's, that's it. That's, that's what it was. I do not often try to get into these guys' heads. Uh, I like to look at the data and the information, and you can figure out whether this is okay for you. He destroyed this place off the tee last week. 
um, which I did not think was going to be all that possible for him. And he just manhandled it, gained seven strokes off the tee, gained throughout the bag. Friday, or excuse me, Sunday for the first 15 holes looked like the best putter in the world. If the only mental, if the only concern is mental, and the only mental concern is at major championships, then why not Rory? Right. And I know that is incredibly scary to think about, but I think that's how I'm going to approach it this week. I'm going to look at, you know, him never finishing outside the top 20 at this event. And that's not with, you know, a signature status. Finished seventh here last year. Coming into this week, he's been splendid. I will be very interested to see what people do with him this week, which we will know on the live chat, which by the way, I should have started with this. The live chat this week, alert, 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 is 9 a.m. Eastern on Wednesday. I know that is different. Uh, That is six hours earlier than normal. I am, Mina and I are flying to a wedding. We're going to be in Denver. Uh, So we're flying on Wednesday and we need to get that done. Um, If you're from Denver, please uh, leave in the comments your best pizza place in and around Denver. That Denver, that would be great. So it's going to be 9 a.m. Eastern on Wednesday. I'm waking up early. If you go there and drop your question now, throughout the week, I'll try to grab the questions before YouTube erases them. If you can't make it that way, you can watch it later. I'll do my I'll do my best on that. Also, while I'm doing announcements, the um, splash contest for this week, we are filling these very, very quickly. I, I assume because it's guaranteed $5,400, like it's guaranteed no matter what. Th- this is already a fifth full and I just opened it up for the first time. So it's tiers, um, guaranteed, it's $20 an entry. Somebody's gonna win the 800 bucks up top. It's very fun, very simple, um, and we're growing it. It's very, very cool. So that listener league has really taken off a bit. Okay, sorry, back to the regularly scheduled programming. Xander Shoffley is your defending champion here. Ludwig Oberg played here for the first time and finished 24th last year. I'm going to kind of see what these guys are doing. Um, Xander, I think is, is, is likely, uh, my favorite there out of those two, just because of how well he's played this year. I think he's been the second best player in the world. He won this event, excuse me, he won it in 2022. He's not the defending champion. He did not win this last year. That was Keegan Bradley. I should have, I should have remembered that. Um, but he's been, he's been stellar. And then Ludwig, is there a golf course that is bad for him? I think the short answer is no, but if there is, might it be this one? right? Distance. He doesn't really get the reward of distance, but he is still very accurate, very good precision. He might run into a couple of tricky spots around the greens that maybe a little bit more experience would help. He goes from an A minus to an A or maybe from an A to an A minus, something like that, right? But I do think this is probably on the other side of good courses for him, but I'm not sure there are any bad courses for him. The 9K range is full with a lot of guys that I think are going to be popular, right? You've got Colin Morikawa here who has been um, very, very good as of late, right? I mean, it's throw out the Zurich, but the 16th at the Wells Fargo, fourth at the PGA, fourth at the Charles Schwab, runner up at the Memorial, and then 14th at the uh, US Open in which he, again, again, for now the third straight tournament has gained throughout the bag, which is just such a really good sign. He's picked up seven strokes, um, putting over the last, uh, two, eight rounds. What are people going to do with him? Right. We, we showed it. It, it. He has not been good here. It has only been, I think it's three career trips. Uh, let's see here. 2019 T 36, 2020 missed cut 2023 missed cut lost strokes approach in each of his last two, uh, completely different guy right? Just completely different guy right now. But I will be interested to see if people underplay him because of that. The other one is Patrick Cantlay. How quick are we to run to Patrick Cantlay? T3rd at the US Open, in my opinion, by far his best result of the year, statistically, and just in terms of the field that he that he beat. I mean, he was literally, there is an alternate universe in which Patrick Cantlay wins the US Open, and we are not that far away from it, right? He had a, what, 20-foot putt on 18 for to get in at five under. If he makes that, which is, what, 14%, and if Bryson does not get up and down from that fairway bunker in which 
he said he th- that's like a three out of 100 shot. Then we're in a three-way playoff and anything can happen in a playoff. So it, we are not it, like there's another universe not that far from here in which Patrick Cantlay just won the U.S. Open. Um, but his history at TPC River Highlands is is essentially unmatched. Uh, fourth, thirteenth, thirteenth, eleventh, fifteenth, fifteenth in each of his last six in his in his last six years. Going back to the the course horses, the only golfer who has played more rounds since two thousand and eight and played better than Patrick Cantlay at TPC River Highlands is 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 Brian Harmon. So I am fascinated, and we'll know more on Wednesday. What are people going to do with Colin and Cantlay? That's the most fascinating section of this board in my opinion. Victor Hovland might be the odd man out. Miscut the US Open, which, you know, unfortunately kind of thought was going to be possible. We saw some really big numbers around the greens, on the greens last week. Uh, Victor was was victim to the around the green number. Other than that, he played well enough. So I'm, I'm, we are getting very close to this just being like an every week Victor Hovland thing again. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama, Solo sixth. He is such a great golfer. The uh, history here is 13th in 2023. That's the that's the recent history. Look at these ball striking numbers. Look at the putting numbers. He has gained strokes putting in four straight and a lot of them. We're running out Hideki. And then the other one that I'll point out, I mean, there's a lot going on here. Um, I wish Sam Burns' record at River Highlands was better. Did not play last year. Missed cut in 2022, T13, T24, T43 in his last five. Sam Burns, and I tweeted this out so you might have seen this. He played the last 66 holes at five under par last week. So he started five over through his first six. I didn't even realize he made the cut until like Saturday morning because I just assumed he was gone. Battles back from that on Thursday morning, actually gained strokes to the field. And then he has a great final three days to finish T9 at the U.S. Open. I will pat myself on the back. I didn't get a lot. I got it. We did okay last week with with bombers and warming on Bryson later in the week. But I have now declared twice this year a golfer that I believe is going to have their best major championship result. And we've gotten them both right. So I'm probably going to retire from that. Sam Burns last week and Bryson at the Masters. So I'm... I'm, uh, I think I'm retiring from from those types of statements, but Sam Burns is here at nine at nine thousand dollars. The eight K range. Will Russell Henley be the most popular golfer on the slate? I think there's a pretty good case for it. So if you go to, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, right? Uh, let's start with the Holy Grail. So let's start with the course history. Twenty two rounds here, one point two nine strokes gained per round. That is the sixth best in this field uh, of anybody with at least eight rounds. Okay, so we've checked off that box. Um, course fit. We can check that off because, uh, you know, this is a golf course that's, you know, precision. So he's got course history, course fit. Look at the trends tool. So this looks at how a golfer's playing now compared to their 100 round baseline and gives them kind of a new adjusted strokes gain trend. If you take Russell Henley, who is playing about nine tenths of a stroke in the last 36 over his 100 round baseline and add it to his baseline, he is now basically uh, the seventh best player in this field, right? Looking at kind of that heat situation and he is priced to move, right? Coming off the T7 at the U S open, really great finishes coming in. So he's got recent form. He's got history. He's got course fit. He's got, he's got it all right. So we'll be really interested to see if Russell Henley is the most popular player on the slate. And then what that does with Keegan Bradley, you could conceivably play both of them. He is our defending champion. If you've been following along, you know that I have been heavy on Keegan in this run here, basically since the masters, he has played much better. The putter again, gained him strokes at the U S open. Um, this is his, it's not a super bowl. It's his AFC championship game, right? Um, just just loves this event. He's going to have the, the crowd behind him, all that fun stuff. The rest of this range, Justin Thomas, I, I could just rip my hair out from this guy, right? I could just absolutely rip my hair out. I don't know what to do with this. Uh, after looking, so so is it like... Can I just say it's mental and just and just pick him again? So 
he has lost strokes on approach three times this year. One of them was at Riviera when he played with Tiger. One of them was at the Masters. And one of them was at the U.S. Open. But he was great at the PGA. So it's not like it's not like it's too big for him or anything like that. But every other week, just absolutely elite level stuff. Maybe we wait and see. I don't know. I really don't know. What do you think we should do with Justin Thomas? Finished ninth year last year. Let me know what you think. I, I don't know. Um, Corey Connors at $8,400. This, this sets up like a good spot for him, right? Accurate drivers, guys who have great distance from edge of fairway. If you go back to the course key stats, he got one of the best adjusted fit numbers, I believe. Yeah, he was he was here right below Mackenzie Hughes and Russell Henley. Gets a, a really good adjusted fit number. He has gained strokes putting and a lot of them in two of his last three. Um, let's see how he's putted here at TPC River Highlands in his career. Not great, but it's over a five-year period. So he lost big in 2018. He lost medium in 2020, and he lost a little in 2023. So maybe he gains a little this time and and picks up a, a stroke there, and now he's very much in contention. The rest of his game looks strong. Uh, I do like that. Brian Harmon, we mentioned it. Just He's done everything but win here, right? Just unbelievable, unbelievable course history. Tom Kim and Matt Fitzpatrick. Let's deep dive Tom Kim for a second. Clearly playing better golf. This should be, in theory, a pretty good spot for him. Distance doesn't matter. Yeah. So in last year's the only time he played here, he gained a stroke off the tee, five on approach. And he gave back three and a half in the short game categories. His short game has been much better recently. He has gained strokes in the short game in seven out of eight. And the one that he lost, he lost huge and still finished T43 at the Memorial. Gained strokes on approach first three days at the US Open. Gained strokes putting the first three days. He really just had a bad, he had a, he actually was awesome the first three rounds. And then he, Let's actually look at this. So let's do strokes game by tournament, 2024, uh, golfer, no, no, uh, US Open. And then can I hit this with the round one, round two, round three? Of course I can. He was the, let's see. Yeah, one, two, three. He was like the third best player in the field over the first three rounds tied with a lot of guys obviously but um wow okay okay tom kim really well done the 7k range it is it's it's sep straka week again right uh, uh he, he is he is proving that he can play on a lot of different golf courses and this is an accuracy and precision test which is perfect for him he was victim to the areas on and around the green last week it happens dude right he made an ace he made a triple that he didn't deserve there is i mean he he got pinehursted right and he is now i mean he only coughs up strokes in the short game categories essentially at major championships or major championship level golf courses this is not. This is a much better spot for him. We 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 ride with Sepp Straka. I would love to find a way to get to Max Homa. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the the cheapest we've seen on Max Homa in a very long time. He is seventy eight hundred dollars. That is the cheapest he has been since. I'm still scrolling. I'm still scrolling. Uh, twenty twenty two Tour Championship, which doesn't count because that it's a really weird thing he was 7900 in memphis in 2022 still not there yet because he's 7800 this week since the 2022 masters and the match play before that and the so that stretch right there from 2022 of the players championship to the masters is when he was last this cheap i get it i mean it's he's been horrible he's not driving it well his second shots are well, he's gained he's gained two and a half strokes or more in three of his last five. The short game's not good enough, and his history here is abysmal. Five missed cuts. 
five for five. And I mean that he has missed the cut in all five. So why do I want to be involved in this? I just love, I just love the buying the historically low multi-time PGA tour winner. I don't have any other reason other than gluttony for punishment. I think it's very easy to get Siwoo and Christian Bezadenhode and Billy Horschel and Denny McCarthy, like those guys, right back, right back in your lineups. Um, the other one is Thomas Dietrich, who, you know, the, I, I I've been impressed with the way that he's played at the, at the last two major championships because I didn't think they were great setups for him. This is almost a little bit of a of a better setup for him, isn't it? Um, you know, I'm kind of just looking at at what he does well. He's got some decent approach numbers from a lot of different proximities. He doesn't three putt. Um, he's a very strong putter. Very good on par threes. Makes a lot of birdies. Can you? You can just see clearly see him growing in confidence. Gained five strokes on approach last week at, at Pinehurst, which is probably his career best, at least on the PGA Tour, dating back a couple of years. But yeah, maybe it's too soon. Maybe it's a hair too soon. But I, I just, I just like the trajectory that that Dietrich's on here. We're we're gonna get a regression on approach, right? Although he's gonna drive it better too. There's not a lot of, you know, that losing three point two strokes at off the tee. That's it, there's probably a regression coming for Dietrich, but I'm very interested moving forward. The six K range. Before we run a model here, let's just do this. I just want to see who the best player has been over the last thirty six rounds. Raw, Ben Griffin, Mackenzie Hughes, Victor Perez is back. Okay, so I want to uh, actually uh, we gotta dive into a couple guys here. So let's do Victor Perez, Michael Thor Bjornsson. This would normally be a great Lucas Glover spot, though he is he has not played particularly well. We could look at Seamus Power together. We could look at Andrew Putnam together. I I still believe in Nick Dunlap, who's sixty six hundred. Okay, let's look at those guys. So Victor Perez, 50th at Charles Schwab, third at the Canadian Open, 12th at the Memorial, and then miscut at the US Open, which I'm going to forgive basically anybody for. Maybe this is a chance for him just to continue that good stretch of golf again. Michael Thor Bjornsson, if you're not if you're not familiar with him, he is uh He's graduating from college, right? He he got in. He's going to be a, a PGA Tour holder. I don't know if it starts this week or not with uh, PGA Tour University. So that's the way Ludwig got out last year. This is the way Michael Thorpe Bjornsson got, at, got in this year. Uh, do not expect them to be the same, right? Do not expect that. He played in the John Deere Classic last year in July, finished T-17. He played in Dubai in January, finished T-11. That's a stacked field. Very, very good player. Don't expect the the Ludwig immediate success, but he's very good for 6,500. Seamus Power has gained strokes on approach in all but one start since the Arnold Palmer Invitational. And his lack of uh, distance is not a huge issue here. And if you look at all of these, I mean, I'm not a big proximity bucket guy, but every proximity bucket from 50 to 75, all the way up to 175 to 200, he is top 100 on the PGA Tour. And most of them, he's top 60, which is that's very difficult to do. He's not great at anywhere, but he's good. He's good at all those places. And uh, this is this is a course that is not going to beat him up distance wise. Oh, I clicked Andrew Putnam, but I wanted, who did I want? I wanted um, Hubbard. Did I want Hubbard? I don't know why I clicked Putnam's name. Hubbard, is Hubbard in this field? Hubbard's not in this field. That's who I thought I was clicking when I clicked that. No, Hubbard is not in this field. Well, let's look at Putnam. Why did I click that? Because he was in there as strokes gain total, but I thought this was, I thought I was clicking Hubbard's name. This is not. This is not good. Loses a ton of strokes, ball striking. Hard to make it all up with with just the putter. Okay, let's run a model. Let's run a model here. Travelers Championship. Let's do a couple of items here. 
before I forget. Let's do course history because this is a very sticky course. So we're going to put uh, TPC River Highlands for 12. We are also then going to do short courses for 12. We're then going to do driving accuracy for 15 and distance for five. So total of 20 there. We're going to do strokes gained approach last 24 rounds for 20. Around the green last 24 rounds for 10. Putting last 24 rounds for 10. And then we are going to put our final 16 on uh well let's do fantasy points gained our number one golfer is scotty scheffler no surprise wow look at this okay scotty one xander two no problem no problem ludwig three russell henley is four Rory's five, Collins six, Hideki seven, Corey Connors is eight, Brian Harmon is nine, Tony Finau is 10. Cantley is 16th. Yeah, he's been bad recently. That's the problem. Thor Bjornsson, we have very little data and it's old data, but he's 21st. Victor goes down to 26. That kind of hurts. So Henley at four, Connors at eight. That's very interesting. Sam Burns at 11. I'm not even sure this is that good of a course for him, but that's a good model. I'm going to save this. Save it as, I like to do the date because that's easy to sort. Travelers, Monday. Hmm. Okay, well, we can dive more into this on Wednesday. It'll be an early morning for me and maybe for you. But again, if you just want to go drop your question now. I'll do my best to grab those throughout the week. Um, I'm wishing you the best of luck. Let's rock and roll.